Hey, what's going on, y'all? Welcome in to a special Friday episode of Snaps. That's right, guys. We're here on a Friday because what happened last night, Thursday, August 31st, we got our first taste of week one of NCAA football. One good game, one awful game, ton of interesting storylines, all the same. I'm one of your hosts, T-Bob Baber, joined as always by Aaron Murray, who did an excellent job on the Mizzou uh, South Dakota game last night. So a great job to you, Aaron. I was uh, enjoying flipping back and forth while I was watching some other games as well. Uh, But yeah, look, this is going to be quick in and out. We're going to give you our biggest takeaways from Utah, Florida, biggest takeaways from Minnesota, Nebraska, and then maybe a touch on the end of some ACC news that broke today. Aaron, what's up, man? How are we feeling? How'd the call go last night? You sounded great. I'm surprised because my throat felt like dog crap after doing five hours of radio and then jumping right into a football Oof. game afterwards. But uh, we made it, and now I gotta rest the vocal cords to to call Georgia's football game versus UT Martin tomorrow night. So uh, it's a busy weekend, but football's great. Love it. I, I would not trade it for the world. And there's one thing that that we were talking about on the thread last night. The game is so much faster without the stoppage of clocks it was flying by i'm like this is great our game finished you know three hours and 10 minutes usually last year i feel like most of my games were three hours and 30 minutes like 20 minutes less of having to just talk is uh, a a dream come true for a guy in the booth so uh yeah rule changes should have been done years ago well, and you're also dealing with a bit of the for- unfortunate side where just given the nature of the matchup last night and the nature of matchup Saturday, yeah, you got to fill time. You got to almost put on like your uh, your baseball announcer hat and you were doing yeah. a very shrewd job. Your, your voice sounds um, deeper on air. I don't know if it's just a natural thing, the stage or whatever, but it's got like a depth to it that was pretty sexy. I think it's a Not standing. Lie. That's why I should probably stand when I do more Maybe shows. So. engages the core muscles a little bit more. The diaphragm can expand properly. Sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So, look, last night, though, two electric atmospheres in Utah and Minnesota. Yeah. Let's start with the game that more people watched. Uh, number 14, Utah playing host to Florida. Of course, the Gators, despite having a bad year, despite Utah being packed off champions last year, the Gators won this game in the swamp. It was crazy. Anthony Richardson making plays. And Utah, Aaron, so ends up yesterday down Cam Rising, which is all really talked to really talk about. I didn't realize Utah was down eight starters going into last night, eight starters, and they still beat the shit out of the Florida Gators. Aaron, give me your number one takeaway from last night. Is it more? Actually, I'm gonna leave it there. Number one takeaway from last night: uh, the coaches lost the game for Florida. Mm. Coaches lost the game for Florida. And then I'm not, I mean, maybe not lost it because I don't know if Florida still would have won the game, but they did not put them in a situation to go out there and have success. I, I honestly, I went, I watched, I watched the game somewhat as I was calling my game last night. Then this morning, I, I, I rewatched it, kind of the uh, the the coaches tape to get a better idea yeah. for what exactly went on, and it was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. To be honest, like I, I did a poll last night. On Twitter, and probably my Twitter is not the best place to do a poll about Florida because most of my followers are Georgia fans, but I said, could Florida be the worst team in the SEC? 82% of the fans voted yes, 18% no. So I think that was more Georgia fans just excited about the uh, you know UF losing the first game to Utah. I don't but- know. I, I'd say yes from just watching it last night. Uh, it's not as bad, man. I'm telling you, it's not Why? as bad. Why, because Graham Mertz you- threw for 330 yards? He looked really good. I'm telling you, Graham Mertz looked good. It's not just the, the way through. I mean, some of the passes that he was making throughout the ball game, um, I, I would say a couple of things and that 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 bothered me. And sorry you asked for one, but I'm going to give you more, damn it. Coaching mistakes, getting away from the run at times. They felt like they completely abandoned the run, which was their best two playmakers are the running backs. And you, the, the, the stats are a lie. You look at the stats like, oh, well, why would you run the football if if you're averaging like, was like 0.06 yeah i'm not saying what are you talking about the running game was fucking but, but the, the problem is you you throw in sacks into that that's the problem like Graham mertz had minus 29 yards because of the sacks like that yeah, is a yeah, major yeah. skew to the running game but the fact that montreal johnson only ran the ball three times etn only ran the ball seven times like they got away from it and and major gaps throughout the game where you looked at utah they stayed true to the run game and just kept going back to it, kept going back to it, kept going back to it, staying steady with it. So I, I, 
I think this was more to me a, a coaching mishap from Florida more than a player mishap. In, so, in uh, I mean, so I, I guess you're not wrong, but I guess the problem is uh, we – knew this we knew florida was more talented they're in the blue chip ratio above 50 percent club utah is not so like we knew on an individual player to player basis that florida was going to be better the question was is billy napier that guy right because we know kyle whittingham is like we know yes. kyle whittingham's a top 10 coach of the entire country how else are you down uh eight starters how else are you not only missing cam rising but i was interested to learn this bryson barnes who's going into his junior year who we talked about a lot this week in the run-up to this game he was actually third string in camp he got yeah. beat out by a true freshman who ended up getting hurt indefinitely so how many other schools could be down eight starters down to their third string quarterback mm -hmm. and not just beat but handle uh and really beat the shit out of a a a team that is more talented not many Right. So right here, I don't know that you could have a more stark contrast between good culture and yep. bad culture, because to me, it looked like Florida gave up the same way they gave up last year against Oregon State. I think mm -hmm. that team gave up. And, and I Did get you? why. Yeah. they. Yeah, mean, the second half, look at the defense. I thought the defense got better through the football game. I thought Graham Mertz gained confidence for the game, too. The defense should have been good, is my point. So, yeah, like, okay, they may have gotten better, but they should have done better anyway. They shouldn't have given it, like, oh, yeah. No, the but okay, I, I don't know. Maybe it's because you chose Florida. I don't know how. I mean, I, I get a bit of what you're getting at in that it's maybe there's some positives to draw here, but they went one of 13 on third downs and missed yeah. a 31 yard field goal. They had an illegal substitution penalty where two guys to the same number on the field at the same time, mm -hmm. which is so mind boggling and excusable. That kept a drive wide which led to a touchdown. They got a punt inside their own five-yard line, which led to throwing an interception deep in their own territory, which led to a touchdown. And they committed three penalties when faced with third and one or fourth and one. That's pathetic, dog, on yep. all fronts, on all fronts. Awful, for, and on the fourth down, just awful play call, awful. I mean, again, they, they, they have good players, but all of that speaks to the potential of being the worst team in the SEC. I don't, no, I don't see it. I don't see it. I saw enough. I saw enough playmaking ability on the offensive side of the football yesterday from, and, and that was without even getting the running game going. Like if, if you want to poke a hole, like just focus on the offense. And I would say both lines of scrimmage. I thought the offensive line did not do their job properly. The, the inability to get the running game going early, which we knew that was going to be a struggle. This is a good Utah defense at home. Crowd noise is a factor, but the offense line did not play well. I didn't think the defensive line for, for a good chunk of the game didn't play uh, as well as they possibly could have either. Like they got dominated at the line of scrimmage. And if you're going to go on the road, you, you a couple of things can't happen. One, you can't learn. You can't lose the turnover battle. You can't lose the, 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 the penalty battle. And you definitely sure as hell can't lose the battle up front in the interior. And they lost all three of those in yeah. the game. But when I kind of take a step back and look, where were the good parts of this game? One, Graham Mertz looked great. Like he looked really right. good. So, I was, I was, I was very impressed with how he played throughout the football game, especially under duress for for a good majority of it. I thought the receivers uh, showed a lot of promise in this game, not just Ricky, but other guys that made plays throughout the ball game as well. And then you look at the defense side of the football. You know, they gave him a couple chunk plays, and you know that that Nate Johnson made him look pretty silly on that that touchdown run. But they they held pretty strong there in the second half. And they looked like they were a unit that was starting to work more efficiently together. So are they are they a top 10 team in the SEC? I don't think so, but I would disagree. Like They're not the worst team in the SEC either. Um, also, you take out sack numbers, they had 13 rushes for 42 yards. Uh, they were they, they were still not good on the great, ground. But, but once again, it's not the – it's not – the numbers play into it. I'm just saying it's it's the the threat of even trying to attempt to run. Like they completely just abandoned it. Oh, you're down 17-3. You know, like what do you what do you? No, what are you, this what was early on in the game. They started giving up on it. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, well, it, look, good for Florida fans because Aaron Murray and Snaps are providing you maybe the one bastion of hope that you are going to find anywhere listening to anything today. Because to me, it felt like a disaster of a game.
Uh, let's talk about Utah, though. Kyle Winham's culture, like I said, really proving itself. How do you overcome eight starters? Because you built a really good program, really good team. Environment electric. Shout out Bryson Barnes. I know your old angry heart, Aaron, has to be so happy. This is a cat at Bryson Barnes who set Utah high school records mm -hmm. when it comes to playing the quarterback position. Goes to Utah, ends up getting beat out, still sticking around. He's a junior, still sticking around even after being third string in camp, and he's rewarded with opportunity. What does he do? 12 of 18, 159, has a touchdown there, runs for another, just and, and, and most importantly, handles his business, does his job as the third string quarterback, and leads his team to a massive dub uh, that they needed to have. I mean, they were clearly yeah. the better team, and they went out there and I proved it. So just – a plus all around from the Utes and uh, and Bryson Barnes sticking around, and also that like even the sticking around to me is a testament to Whittingham's culture. You had Utah winning the Pac-12, correct? I had them losing to Washington in the Pac-12 uh, championship. The, they they between what you talked about with ten guys being out, Cam Rising being out, and to see how good that defense looked, they are disciplined. There there wasn't really major gaps of, of any sort of issues on all three levels as you kind of watch those guys execute the defense. And there shouldn't be. I mean, they return the majority of guys on that side of the football. That will be the best defense in the Pac-12. And you bring Cam Rising back. It's kind of what we said, like, it's kind of what we said when we did our preview show. I was like, you know, I finally was like, okay, I'm going to dive into Utah for the Ooh. first time. And I'm like... Mm. Okay, surely yeah. they lost a ton. And they're like, oh, wait, no, no, they're actually bringing everybody back. Like, they're bringing back more than all the other teams. Why the fuck are we choosing them again? I don't know. Because like, we don't, cause I think deep outside, like, we don't want the, the Utah brand. We want, I do. Oregon. I like Utah brand. We want Washington. We want USC. Like, those brands people want to see in the I playoffs. want Washington because they've got a lefty that fucking has a rocket arm. Like, that's yeah. as dumb as that is. My brain is dumb. And that's why I like Washington so much. It's, and his name's Penix which is funny, close to penis, like that. that's basically, and I like Kalen DeBoer a lot because Kalen yeah. DeBoer is someone who had to win at smaller levels, win championships at smaller levels to earn his opportunity. He didn't go, because Aaron, you know what I don't trust in college football? I, I A lot of times, every now and then it works out, I don't trust a coordinator that gets jumped up. We see you go awry all the time. I more yeah. trust a guy like DeBoer who's been to Sioux Falls and won NIA in a IA national championships kind of earns his way to that. And he had successful coordinators. Well, don't be wrong, but like, those are the guys that I trust. And so that's why I like Washington, but God winning hand too, may be the best coach in that conference. Probably no, maybe. I mean, yeah, he's won it twice in a row. Instead yeah, of, I mean, well, right Lincoln now. Riley, I guess is the only one that's kind of that could claim that because of his resume, but head to head, he's two and oh, against done, him. yeah, beat that ass so far. Yeah. So we'll see, but feeling great about Utah, awful about Florida. Anything else in this game before we get into the corn hub? Uh, no, I, I think it's a theme of the weekend and, and I'll hit it a little bit on this next one. And I kind of touched on it a little bit too, like early first week and make sure for those watching this and you get ready to watch Saturday. I mean, early in the season, it's about taking care of the football, the fundamentals, Oof. the little things. Like if you can just do the little things correct, which is is hard to do. And everyone's like, oh man, they've had four weeks to prepare and four weeks to do it. These are 18 to 22 year old kids that are still trying to figure out how to play football and trying to figure out their offense and defense. And it, it's going to be ugly at times. The team that can can kind of muster up the, the, the ability to take care of the football, once again, do the little things right, tackle in space, block, uh, are going to win the football game, not commit silly penalties. I mean, that's what happened in both those games last night. The two teams that were on the road were the teams that committed the most penalties, the most turnovers, and didn't win the line of scrimmage for the majority of the game. Yeah, the, but, the key, but the key difference in the game is, yes, Florida did all those things, but also they were the worst thing, or the, excuse me, but also they were the, easily the worst, the worst team. Whereas worst if you team. look, uh, well, yeah, but functionally it's the same shit, you know? If, if you're wasting talent and you're a shit team, I'm not going to give you credit just because you got some guys who are going to go to the NFL. You're still a shit football team. Um, Minnesota, Nebraska, on the other hand, Nebraska outplayed Minnesota, but just yeah. made massive, oh. massively crucial errors 
in so many different parts of big game situations, which is funny as we'll get into the situation of football under rule. But but like Nebraska outplayed Minnesota, but made these crucial errors to lose the game. Florida made crucial errors to lose the game and got outplayed by Utah. That's the only difference I would say. Yeah. Um, all right. L- look, opening statement from the corn hub. And I have mm-hmm. my sweatshirt on, by the way, which I had mm-hmm. the merch link ready to go last night, but I didn't end up tweeting it because, you know, obviously. Um is is the corn hub disappointed i mean how could you not be okay new year same shit result um a game in which there was a lot to like a lot of promises made a lot of promises delivered for matt rule but in the end the song remains the same just unreal brutally stupid and Mm. inexcusable mistakes and super important situations yep. that end up costing you a one score game in which you had a late lead. I mean, for the, for the long time, Nebraska fans, it is a story uh, as old as time now, about the last half decade, I would say it's, 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 it's weird because you could have scripted a worse start for Matt rule, given that like you could have just looked like Florida. You could have come down and looked like complete shit yeah. in every phase of the game, but in other ways you could not have scripted a worse start because you did exactly what Nebraska's been doing the last couple of years, even though it is a bit different, which I would argue, but still it feels mm. the same where you yeah. did so much good, but in the end, you just fucking blew it. Mm. And, and Minnesota wins on a, a walk-off kickoff. I mean, it's, you know, into the first half, first off, you score a touchdown. They don't call it a touchdown. Then you try to run a QB sneak, hurry up. You jump off sides when the sneak would have easily scored then you get lucky and they're like, oh, we're going to review the last play. And granted, uh, I think that I think it was a touchdown. Dean Blandino told you it was. They said, no, it is yeah. what it is. Um, but then you fucking throw a pick. So you can't even make it 3 3. And, 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 and so there it is. Pick at the end of the first half, going to halftime yeah. down 3 nothing. You eat that combination at the end of the first. And then you show the mental and physical toughness to come back, return the kick 61 yards, find a way to get to the end zone. Hell of a statement. And you continue to turn it and you're taking over the game. The run game's working. It's wearing them down. You got five minutes left. You're up 10-3. You're moving the ball. Anthony Johnson breaks a couple tackles in the backfield. He's going to get like five yards of first. Fumbles from behind. Minnesota gets the ball. And this is where you got to credit Minnesota because Minnesota's down to fourth and 10. Ethan Calic Manis had struggled. The Greek rifle didn't have it. He was off target. He delivers a throw that was even a bit off target, but his receiver, God, give me the receiver's name. Why am I blank right now? Um, one of the best catches I've ever seen. Dan- Daniel Jackson. Daniel Jackson, so body aware. Fourth and ten, gotta have it. If that front foot hits out of bounds, your team loses the game. Yeah. Full stop. What do you do? You find some unbelievable way of hitting the full Michael Jordan pose, keeping your mm. front foot up, defying gravity. You secure the catch. You drag the toe. One of the best catches I've ever seen. Okay, but now it's 10-10. Nebraska's still got a chance. What do they do? They're driving the ball, Maybe throw a pick. And just like that, you find a 95% win percentage at one point for Nebraska, and you find a way to lose the game. And for uh, Huskers fans, it's just a story as old as time. Yep. It, it was, uh, it was, it was tough to watch. And it, I mean, off, honestly, offensively, it was tough to watch. I mean, Jeff Sims, the interceptions were, were horrendous. I mean, just, just, what are you throwing into man? Uh, I, I think you have to kind of take a step back as a, as a staff and, and re- reevaluate what your offense is going to be and reevaluate yeah. what your team's going to be in the identity of the team because you you watch the defense. And, and listen, Minnesota is going through some changes on offense and they got to figure out who they are as well and kind of what their issues are. But you look at that Nebraska defense and 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 they were awesome to watch. They were dominant up yeah. front. They were getting after the quarterback. They were stopping the run. That was a team that was playing with energy from the first whistle to the last whistle. So to me, this is a football team in Nebraska that's going to play ugly football this year. Oh, just yeah. to be honest, it's going to be it's going to be ugly. Games are going to be like we just saw last night. They're going to be thirteen to ten. They're going to be sixteen to seven, and and you just have to accept that. So so what does that mean for our offensive identity? Well, we have a quarterback that's big as shit can run. Yeah, and I would say we have an. Uh, I thought the offensive line was 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 average last night. Their left tackle was was abysmal in pass protection. Number I think sixty eight. Um, 
you have a guy that that is not a great thrower. You have an offense line that's not tremendous in pass protection. What do you want to do? If we're going to play low scoring football games, let's just run the ball. Let's just, we have to re identify who we are. And Jeff Sims is going to have to be essentially a glorified uh, wildcat quarterback. We have to do more of it. I mean, it's going to no, be a straight you wildcat can't, you, quarterback. You can't, to me, you almost can't do more of it than they did. Like, like Jeff Sims just has to be better. Or you can get another quarterback. I don't think he can't be better. No, you can't do another quarterback. You have to do, look, like you said, it, it's, it's a weird situation where Jeff Sims is simultaneously the fuel and engine of your offense. Like he's the only thing that makes his, it work. His, his career stats, T-Bob, are 31 touchdowns and 26 interceptions. Yeah. He is who he is. Like we've seen enough of Jeff Sims to know the kid is not a great passer of the football. His title. So I'm not attack. arguing that. I'm not arguing that. What I'm saying why, is like, why, why, why put the team in a situation where he's going to continue to turn the ball over and not just understand we're going to win low scoring football games and we're just going to beat his ass up because he's going to run the ball 20 times a game. Well, I mean, I think I think they'll probably continue to do that. And they, but, but the, I mean, you don't feel like they tried to do that. They just they literally did, put it because more. they had like you had to throw it at the end of that first half. You didn't have if Jeff Sims did, if, down, if Jeff Sims didn't throw the football in that game last night. If you, you win ten times, they win. I agree, but at the same time, it's third and goal before half. You don't have a timeout. You have to throw that ball. You have to take a shot at the end zone. You can't fucking not. Uh, you're trying to win the game at the end of two minute situation. You have to but be willing give to him, throw. Give him a more, you, give him a just simple, ha- has to play. be better. Give him an easier play. Give him a a. I think they tried to give him easy plays. The problem was no. he would lock into his first read and just stare him down. It's a star concept where you're running a flat, you're running a corner, you had a guy in the flat, you have a sit down route. You're kind of reading, you know, do I want to hit the first sit down right now? If the linebacker jumps it, then I can kind of maybe take a shot in the in the back of the end zone to the corner. He doesn't see the corner dropping. It's an interception. It's a it's a read play. If if you want to play it safe and in plus throw the football, line up two receivers. Say, pick your best matchup, throw a fade. Throw a fade. I don't yeah. need you to progress. I don't yeah, need you yeah, to go one, yeah. two, three. I, I, I get behind that. You catch I it, you throw that. it. Um, so, again, I, I call it the Jeff Sims paradox because I believe that he is – because I love their identity. You mentioned ugly football game. I thought it was awesome. It was a bunch of corn-fed motherfuckers just it mashing was. against each other, it dude. Was. We're talking, like, just hitting. And, and then everybody be like, fuck it, we're going to fucking run the ball. And then just, like, keep hitting each other. Right. And so Jeff Sims works great in that context. He is the identity of this team. But in the same way that he was the driving, you know, he was the engine and the fuel behind the offense, he was paradoxically also the fucking telephone pole that they ran into. That they got wrapped around and that killed everybody in the car. Like it's, 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 it's. I think it's a situation where you just have to make Sims be better. And maybe it's by helping him out. Like you said, Aaron, like a fade would be a fade would be no yes. reading, no reading. We're going to, we're going to try to create the simplest passes that one could possibly imagine. Um, and yes. the problem is you're right. There was a lot of mental toughness shown by the Nebraska. Uh, I, the defense in the last few years has been shit. Generally they bend and break last night. It was bend, but don't break in the first half. In the second half, it was just, okay, don't even bend. For a long time. And granted, they give up the fourth and 10, but like at a certain point, you had to because that was just an incredible play. It's so it's 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 just a weird, impossible. And and shout out to all the corn hub money line betters. We had it plus 240 odds. We fucking had it. But it's 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 a weird place to be because objectively, again, there is a lot to like. Yeah. Matt Rule is changing this team. Unfortunately. The end result was just the same, and that, I would have rather see them get also, blown. Like, out. I would have rather I would rather them get blown out, and me say, "Let's Matt Rule give him a year," but to see the same no. fucking result, I don't know, no. man. I mean, I feel you. It, it is, sucks. Is, it is, it sucks because it's the same thing, man. What's what's the definition of in, uh, insanity? Insanity. Do the, the same thing, thing over, over and over, over again. Yeah. Like it just yeah. feels like we're we're in that in that the mental ward right now for Nebraska fans where you just keep getting the same result over and over and over and over and well, over. Well, that's where you got to be willing to engage with nuance. Crazy. That's where you got to be willing to engage with nuance. Like yeah. I feel like I would have much rather seen what I saw last night than Nebraska get blown out. Cause you at least saw a team that is buying into now. Can he keep them buying in? If shit starts to slide, that's going to be the mark of a great coach. Or does the team check out like they have in recent years? Well, you know, that remains to be seen, but, um, 
And also, I, we should credit P.J. Fleck the same way we're giving Kyle Whittingham credit for making a winning program. You know who didn't make those fucking brutal errors? I mean, Minnesota's offense didn't play great. Ethan Kalik Manis mm -hmm. didn't play great, but they didn't make all the like they didn't make those mistakes that Nebraska did. And then when they yep. had opportunity because of those mistakes, they made the most of them. And so, like, there's something to be said for what PJ Fleck has built there in Minnesota. The same way we talk about Kyle Whittingham. That's a winning culture, winning team. And again, both environments were awesome. Uh, yep. So credit to Minnesota and PJ Fleck. Other thoughts? I think Minnesota's uniforms are actually my favorite in the entire country. It's something that I've always felt like I've known, but I've never quite spoken aloud. Last night pretty much confirmed that. And then also, uh, P.J. Fleck is a Rob Corddry character. The guy from like Daily Show, Hot Tub Time Machine, Harold and Kumar. They look exactly alike. Their vibes are so similar, especially when he had on those Minnesota maroon um, Oakleys on chomping away at the gum like i could see right row the boat kind of the cheesiness of fleck it literally is perfect one-to-one -one. Yeah. uh so I'm credit pj fleck in minnesota the corn hub emotions are down okay but our hearts remain strong aaron murray and if you thought i was gonna fucking bail just because one tough loss you don't fucking know me okay because what do i do when i taste blood i say give me fucking more and i come back and i spit that blood in the eyes of my enemy and then i kick him in the dick and i beat their ass the next week just like nebraska is about to do next saturday against colorado let's go colorado baby uh but so great games Excellent environments to prove why college football is so special, even though we had to be assaulted with Ryan Brumley's awful takes that bands shouldn't exist in college football. Get the fuck out of here, Brumley. Uh, just a wonderful night for college football, but um, unfortunately, T Cobb feeling a little sad here on this Friday. Here's to hoping that uh, LSU can get it done Sunday night. You a little worried about Georgia UT Martin? I mean, is I it am, boring I being a Georgia fan? Like, what do you do during the regular season? Just watch other games, I'm guessing. Yeah, you bring a couple. I mean, I'll have like, you know, my 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 iPad up in the booth watching other games. As <laughs> watching other playing, games you know, during the when game. I'm, when I'm in story time in the third and fourth quarter, most likely. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, real quick, we should mention. I have, a whole, uh, I have a whole Carson Beck novel I'm ready just to read off. I'm just going to sit here and, and just, you know, put the people to sleep as they watch the game. I... Mm. The group message, I did not get involved because I'm like, why well, Herb, she doesn't pick on game day. I'm maybe a little too close and I don't want to be nasty. But just in terms of pure look, Beck does not have a QB1 look. That's all I'm saying. That's yeah, all I'm saying. See, he, he, he does not have a look that life, inspires you, you know, you confidence. Know, when you see him in real life, like that's... Oof. He probably has good size. He probably he's has good a, size. Massive. All right. All right. Massive. All right. He's all six four, six five, like two twenty five, thick legs. Okay, okay, yeah. we're gonna see. We're gonna see. You're um, gonna learn. Yeah, you're gonna learn today. Uh, last yeah, thing I would UT say, to learn. If, you ain't gonna learn shit against UT Martin. Uh, last thing I'll say is that the ACC approved what SMU, Cal, and Stanford joining the conference, according to Ross Delger. I, I mean, I don't have any take on it right now. We can react to it later. I just felt like I had a professional responsibility to at least mention it crazy i don't mind though i'm not like one of these people that's like on the west coast what the fuck i do wish that we could all just be like take a step away. all right all right guys all right guys common sense let's dial it back we'll make all these moves football only and then everybody else could just keep doing what we were doing but you know that ain't gonna happen whatever but what i don't want to hear is stanford being like but the money go look at stanford's fucking endowment uh, don't bitch about money stanford the closest, I mean, they're going to be traveling 2,000 plus miles every away game to play in the, in the ACC. I just, I, 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 I get it because I guess there's a clause when it comes to, to renegotiations where if the ACC gets under a certain amount of schools that they're, they essentially get brought back to the table. So the thought of Florida State or Clemson trying to get out, they're trying to gear up for that to make sure that they, you know, this whole Makes grand rights thing. So, I mean, that's why they did it. But other than that, it makes absolutely zero sense. It makes zero sense. Uh, well, well, no, it makes sense in that you have to have a Power 5 conference if you want to play for playoff bids. So, so if you want to be in the sports that matter and you want to stay relevant, then you have to join the ACC. Do we know which team voted yes? Because there was four that were holding out. 
no, I don't know who would have uh, eventually broken yeah. down. That's a good I question. Wonder, I wonder when that comes out. Um, Stanford, though, again, if anybody tries to cry poor like Stanford did during the pandemic, you little you sons of bitches, they were cutting sports left and right and being like, we don't have the money. Stanford has a $36 billion endowment. That endowment has an annual payout of $1.5 billion. 21% of the total operating expenses of Stanford are covered simply off of the endowment. So miss me with that bullshit mm. Cardinal and get your ass to Carolina to play Clemson. Shout out Troy Taylor. I do like your coach. They play tonight. Yeah. SMU though. How about the SMU thing with the whole, with the, the coming over, not taking any of the revenue. Well, that's what every team has to do because nobody's going to vote. No, you in the, the other ones are taking a 30% cut. Oh, really? SMU's taking oh, none. Well, well, that also makes sense too, though, because SMU is the odd man out here. They're the only one that's jumping up. Everybody else is yeah. moving laterally. SMU's sure. joining the club. If you want to get in the club, you got to pay your dues, man. Know what I'm saying? Again, speaking of Texas football, this Saturday, not in the Longhorns, this Saturday, TCU should wear white and make Colorado wear black. Uh, that'll do it for today's snaps. Really looking forward to the rest of the week. We'll have a Saturday night show. Aaron will have a Sunday night show. Aaron, who, Aaron, who are you calling Saturday? Oh, Georgia UT Martin. Duh. Jesus. God. What? Sorry, sorry, I forgot the game that everybody's excited about. Um, back to back national chance. Everyone wants to see what they look like. New quarterback. I mean, the storylines are endless for the dogs. So, yeah, actually, true. Actually, yeah. true. So, shout out dog fans. Enjoy watching that game. I'll be watching some just for my guy, Aaron Murray. Uh, YouTube.com slash at volume snaps if you want to help out the show. Uh, and remember, as always, you can just Google Snaps Podcast, rate, review, and everything else. Huge thank you to everybody who helps make Snaps happen, including Ryan Brumley, Pat Gunther, Adam Gracia, Danny Cardenas, Chris Tran, a.k.a. CT from The Real World. Uh, a huge thank you, most of all, to you, the listeners. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Volume, Papa Colin. And uh, we'll be back Saturday night with some more Snaps. See you then. <laughs>